G'day superstars. I hope you're still surviving in style. God knows I am. All right, self tip number two. Now we're gonna talk about all things cycling because once again, I know last time I spoke about people walking and how much walking they're doing. Well, I've actually got back on the bike. Um, and this is my rocket here, the Bianchi 1885. Goes like a rocket. Well, hopefully, I'd like to think I could ride it like a rocket, but anyway. So we're gonna talk a little bit about what we can do for ourselves whilst we're off the bike to help us maintain some of the form and fitness and some of the areas that we load up. And look, I've been passionate about cycling for many, many years. I feel for all those out there who are obviously out there training but can't race. Uh, we've got the Tour de France around the corner. Uh, Australia is a massive cycling uh, country. We've been highly successful. If, if you haven't been aware of the success we've had in cycling, then obviously you've been living in a cave. And that's both on track and road and even mountain bike for that matter. So we've got some wonderful champions um, that come out of Oz. <clears throat> so let's talk about cycling. The main thing, and especially with a lot of my cyclists who are on tour, the biggest issue that they have, obviously not only related to their lower back, but also is a lot to do with their hips. And I'm extraordinarily passionate about hips. So if you don't know that either, then also you've been living in a cave. But one of the main areas that I love to treat on any cyclist is right here in the anterior hip and the front of the hip because this is the area that you're basically compressing all the time. So what can we do to try and open these areas up? Well, yes, we can stretch them and so forth. That's not a problem. And I think stretching is a very big part of that, especially opening up those areas. But sometimes you actually just need some hands-on work. So I'm going to show you how you can go about it for yourself. Now, it's not the same as going and seeing your therapist, but it's going to be the next best thing. Okay, so we have the rectus femoris muscle that runs all the way up here. Okay, it comes across the top of the hip and attaches onto the pelvis as well. We also have your hip flexors, your iliopsoas muscle. Okay, that comes down and attaches on the inside of your hips as well. And it's those two muscles there that create a lot of this sort of stiffness and soreness in especially cyclists. <clears throat> so, in order to do that, we get little trigger points that develop there, these hypertonic little areas that become quite significantly painful, they become sore, they can refer pain down the leg, they can refer pain up, they can refer around the hip as well. So we wanna get in there and do a little bit of work with those. The beauty of actually doing it while sitting here is because we've also got these muscles on a bit of a stretch as well. And we're gonna do some massage on those as well. But before we do that, let's do a little bit of trigger point work into the front of our hips. Okay, so the way that we do that is we're gonna use the elbow, the point of our elbow. We're gonna come in here and we're gonna nestle into the crease of your hip there. So basically where you drop over, you'll find that that's where the, the, the skin um, and the junction between the front of your hip and the top of your leg sits. That's where we wanna be sitting in there. So what we do is just grab our elbow, we just sink in there like that, make a fist, bring this hand over the top, okay? And then you can push down. And at the same time that you push down, I want you to also sink in with your shoulder as well. And you'll be able to just get right into that rectus femoris attachment. And you'll probably find, you know, one or two finger widths down, you'll pick up the trigger point, and before you know it, it'll refer all the way down your leg. And it can refer right into your knee. It's fantastic. It's just really so if we can just work we can just sit on that just let it dissipate and that you'll probably find that the the soreness just starts to ease away okay what we can also do is we can drop just bring our wrist out and then we can come in a little bit more medially there work in there as well okay and then we can bring the fist in this way and we can work a little bit further out as well. So we're picking up all those areas in there like so. And this is, honestly, it tells me. Now, next part is, because I love to introduce movement, is then working in and out of flexion as well. Okay, so you'll start to feel things loosen up really, really nicely. Okay, in, out, across, up, and down, okay? and just alternate between those as well. And make sure you do both sides, okay? Now, we also have to deal with the tonicity in our quadricep muscles as well, because that's a big part of it as well. So I've got the nicks on, so what we're gonna do, let's just pull them all the way up there. <clears throat> Try not to give yourself a wedgie. 
and this is where the Premax comes in. I'm going to use the essentials because I want a bit of glide on this. I want to be able to, to work through the tissue quite easy, so I'm not going to be using the original. The essentials is as sweet as, its viscosity is magnificent. I love the, the new inner lid on this, um, and it's got a sweet smell as well. It, it is one of, uh, if not one of my favourites, along with the Activate. So we're going to put a liberal amount on here. Once again, get a good broad covering through here. Okay, like so. And once again, we're going to come down and we're going to use a really, really broad forearm. <clears throat> so once again, it's the same scenario. So we're going to sit up right up quite high and then we can just basically lean into it, okay, and work along the length of the quadricep all the way down like so okay so i'm just starting right through the middle there on rec fem all the way down here remember this muscle is also on stretch okay and this is probably going to be the easiest way we can access these muscles now i can drop over a little bit more medial now Okay, so on the inside, so I'm going to hit that vastus medialis, and you'll find there's a little trigger point right there, about halfway along. And then we can come out to the big vastus lateralis as well. Okay, so we're hitting all those muscles. So we're going to hit vastus lateralis, we've got rec fem, we've got vastus medialis, and we've also got our rec fem trigger point. And we've also got our iliopsoas trigger point here. And if we're even, even more inventive, we can come right out to the side and we can hit that tensor fasciolata, which is also an enormous, an enormous important muscle for cyclists. And it's usually where they get a lot of their tenacity as well. That also refers down the outside of the leg as well. So we can sit in there. You don't have to sink in too far with that, guys and girls. Just little bits, just work across it and so forth. Mix it up. Okay, and you can get really good pressure on there. You know, good three to five minutes of doing that, you'll be amazed how good your quads will feel. Okay, guys, that's what it's all about, surviving in style. For those cyclists out there, yep, get out and amongst it. It's fantastic, depending on where you're living. It will depend on what the weather's like. Um, at the end of the day, like I always say, just be bloody awesome at what you do. Thanks, guys.